Good morning from the homesteading grandparents and welcome to our honey house. I know it looks a little awkward because it is, but actually this is the entryway into our house, but it works out really well for extracting. First of all, it's kind of air conditioned, which I really like this time of year especially. But what we're going to do this morning, as you can see, is we've got some uh, supers here. They're full of honey. Nan and I have spent the last two days out in the bee yard robbing the bees, and we would really like to have videoed that. But 89, 90 degrees, high humidity, fully suited up with our suits, just does not make a good environment for filming. It's hot, and all we could work was like an hour and a half, right, Nan? An hour, and a, hour, hour and a half at a time mm -hmm. because of the heat. So we did get them robbed, and I can simulate that for you in another video, but we did get them robbed, and we have the, the, the boxes in here with the frames, and what we're gonna show you this morning is what we do once we get them inside. Out in the field, we, we go through a lot of effort to make sure that we get 99% of the bees out. Occasionally we'll get a few bees in and, and what they do is they just naturally come out of the box and they'll go to the light, which is the windows or the doors and we'll let them out that way. But they sit here for a day, I like to bring them in, let them sit for a day and acclimate. The, the wax hardens up a little bit. If you bring them straight in from the, the field and it's 90 degrees, then the, the wax is soft. So setting them in a air conditioned environment allows them the wax to harden up a little bit that makes it easier to cut the, the cap off of the, the frame. So that's what we're doing this morning. I've already got started here, but what I'm gonna show you is how, what one of the frames looks like that's full of wax. We'll cut the cap off of it, we'll put it in the extractor, and we'll spin it and get the golden goodness out. So let's do that. This is one of the frames and we wound up with about 10 and a half boxes this year off of our five hives. As you can see, this is, this is one of the fully capped frames of honey. Okay, and what we have to do is we have to get this cap off. And I just use a serrated knife. And we come in here and like I say, we're, we're just a hobby beekeeper. And our honey house is not elaborate, but it works really well for us. Cut the cap off in here in our tub. We use these frames year to year. That the bees build up the, the comb out, and we use it year to year. You can you can see this frame is really full. So this is a this frame here has been used multiple years. These little low places like that right there, we just got a scratcher. We just scratch the cap off of it so that when we get it into the extractor, the honey will swing out. And like next year where we got this scratched like this and the, the, the uh, comb cut, the bees come in, repair any, any damage like this here that I'm doing, they'll build it back out and they'll fill it back up again. Same thing on this side. Just take and cut that cap off. And all the honey that's in this cap, we will recover it. See how easy that comes off once these frames have Kind of set in the air condition. That wax stiffens up a little bit. I've already got five frames in my extractor. This is a six frame a six frame radial extractor and we'll, we'll get over here and get a picture down inside of it what it looks like you can see radial the they're set where the 
the honey will sling to the wall when it starts turning. Okay. All right. Okay, so we'll just start off real slow. These frames are heavy, full of the honey. This extractor, as you can see how it's moving around, all of the frames are not evenly balanced, so we're just starting off slow to get some of the honey slung out. starts to sling against the wall then it gets lighter and it'll, it'll spin easier. We call that a little, when the frames start unloading. Then it gets easier to spin. And you can see it'll start draining out. I don't can you, can you get that man? I can't get that but I'll come. These radial extractors are the way to go, even for the hobby beekeeper. They're not cheap or inexpensive, but they're the way to go. They just do such a good job. You see that honey flowing out of there? I'm gradually just able to speed it up. Spins in a circle. Centrifugal force throws the honey against the out of the frame against the wall of the extractor, and it just runs down the side and collects inside. It you drains know, tell out. How the bees make it on an angle? The honey, I mean the comb. Yeah, the comb. Yeah, so the the I'll pull when I pull the frame out, I'll show you. But the the bees, I think it's 13 degree angle. Those cells are so that when the frame is setting in the in the box like that one over there when it's sitting in that box the honey won't drain out it's set on a 13 degree angle sloped towards the center of the frame god's creation 
But um, when this is at spinning, you can actually smell the the honey. Mm -hmm. it smells so good. See how clean that looks. So what I'll do now is I put this in back in my uh, box, and I take it outside and let the bees clean it up. They'll get all the honey off of there and clean that up. You can see but, through it, right through it. Yeah. But see how this this frame. Yeah. Um, see how this frame when it's set in, in in the box, these cells slope towards the center. Okay, and so that the honey doesn't run out. Pretty cool. Okay, but that's an empty, an empty frame. We'll just put it, put it back in our box. And this is the cappings in the bucket. I'll show you from both sides. See, piece of wood. It's got a little screw in it, and he sets the frame on top of it to hold it steady for him. It's really cool. Then take and stick the lid off and on those other cappings and show them that. And here. After he finishes, he gets several in the other tub, he puts it off in here in another strainer, and it drains out the rest of the honey. And he'll probably restrain that again, but, and then he'll kind of squeeze it. And then he'll melt the honey down. Melt the wax down. I mean, down. melt the wax down, thank you. But we, we filter here off of the extractor with just a strainer, and that's that's it. It's, it's strained a couple of times here, here. We don't put any heat on the honey. It's not, quote, filtered through a, a small diameter filter, so you can see these strainers here, you're still getting some of the pollen particles in there. That's why raw honey is so good for you, is that you're still getting some of the little small particles of the wax, which the wax is built from honey and pollen, and then you're getting some of the pollen in there too. So raw honey is better for you than pasteurized. The commercial honey that you buy off of the shelf, all of that's been pasteurized. Your raw honey is what you're gonna get from your smaller beekeepers and some of the commercial guys are quote commercial. They're, they're not full scale like a Sioux Bee or something like that, but uh, they will, they'll have raw honey also. A lot of the commercial packers use honey from other countries, Argentina, um, South America, Central America. Uh, I'm not sure if New Zealand, Australia, if they export their honey or not, but here in America, we get a lot of different honeys from the countries and these, these packers will bring all of that honey in and they'll blend it. So when you see a honey that's on the shelf, it'll be a, a what we call like a water white or, or really light in color and that's what's happened is you take a lot of your your water white honeys and you mix it with some of your darker honeys to get the blend that you want and but they they're getting it from different countries uh sue b i know that they used to buy all of their honey for locally from the the producers here in america i don't know what they're doing today but your small scale beekeepers your hobby beekeepers we we're pretty much just this, this is all local, and all of our honey is coming from the Chinese tallow tree, the bulk of it. We do have wildflowers as well. In the fall, we'll get more of the wildflower, but during the spring crop, which is what we have now, this is pretty well all tallow honey. And by the commercial standards, it's called, that's a baker's grade honey. Well, we, we do really good with a baker's grade honey, so. Yeah, that bucket's almost full. In fact, I think it is full. Yep. So I just okay. shut the gate. And that was how many frames? That that there is, uh, let's see, was 12. 12 frames. 12 frames. And then there's still a lot of honey in the bottom. So really out of one box, out of one box of, of nine frames that are fully drawn out and fully loaded, you'll get two gallons. That's about, this is about two, two and a half gallons. You'll, you'll get one bucket per, per box.
but you can see there's some wax particles in there. There's a little bee. That's all that we filter out or strain out. I use it in my coffee every day, every day, because I've historically have used to get sinus infections real bad twice a year. And of course, you'd have to go and get all the medications and stuff. Well, when he started doing the bees and we started getting the honey, believe it or not, my sinus infections have really tapered off. And I don't get them so bad anymore. So I can swear by the goodness of the honey as far as the properties and the healing properties of it. Are we done, Paul Okay, guys, until next time, we'll come back and share something else with y'all. Have a blessed day.